Hello guys and welcome to a new Stud Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 10 versus 10 on Tannenberg and I'm going to be using the 17th SS Panzergrenadier. It's been a while since I've made a video with this division. It's a very strong division uh, that is coveted a lot in 1 versus 1. It has extremely nice close range infantry in the form of the SS Legionary. And then it also has plenty of Nebelwerfers, which we are going to be seeing in action today. As this was an incredibly fun game that I really, really enjoyed and, and therefore wanted to make a video about. I did play this on stream on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Gaming. if you want to check that out. I do stream Steel Division every Wednesday and Sunday at 8pm GMT. Uh, but yeah, today we're going to be showing off this replay. And you can see already I've got down loads of these SS Legionary, supported by Volksdeutscher. And I've got a Pioneer Führer here and a Commander at the start. So what I decided to do was bring in the SS Legionary, which are already one vet by default. Bring in a Leader, which makes them two vet. And then also bring in the Commander at the start, so that I can really get an overwhelming infantry advantage at the start of the game. Now Tovsky here has come in on my flank. I do have these 2-2-2s, or sorry, these are 2-2-1s, which have Panzerbuchses. Our Panzer Buxes are usually not that great, but against the M2A1 half tracks, they are perfectly fine. So, able to take out the M2A1 half track there, nice and easy. And you can see my SS Legionary starting to get to work. So, I take out the Sepadi PPSH that my opponent was using against me early on, and my Fox Soldier find the Sepadi Comrati. Unfortunately, the Fox Soldier on the right hand side gets surrendered due to the engagement with the Tankos. So what I opt to do is send my Legionary over there to deal with those. Now, Mortifier is starting to come in. I really want to avoid that with my Pioneer. You, know, you can see I'm going to be running away with the Panda Strike as well. My Legionary do manage to take out this 2 early on, which was nice. So we're off to a very good start in the center of this map. But the flag that we have to cap is this one. And it's not very easy to get to. And we've also ended up losing this flag because Otovsky's come through on my right. So I've got to deal with the Tovsky as well. The Tankos should lose to the Legionary, primarily due to veterancy. Also, our submachine guns are technically better. I do manage to take out his leader, which is very, very important. Removing the leadership from these units allows me to leverage my advantage when it comes to veterancy. Unfortunately, the Tankos did manage to get the better of me there. But my Legionary now coming down to deal with... <laughs> the tank goes. Now what had just happened here was my 221s. I ambushed the T-3476. So I had one of my 221s come down this road and I had one 221 sneak around the side so that I could side shot the T-34 and kill that. So my 221 claiming a T-34 kill, really really good. Unfortunately the Stoker DP do manage to get a PTRD onto one of my transports which cuts my Panzergren squad in half, and I'm also going to receive artillery fire on top of that. We are going to lose one of our teammates, Tide, unfortunately dropped from the game, but that's not too much of a concern for me right now, as I'm just trying to clean up all of the infantry in this forested area. So, Focus Oja are going to fall them back from a Straki SVT, and the Legionary are going to be coming in there. You might have heard the J87, that's because the JU87 strike was coming in, but it got cancelled. Uh, sometimes it still plays the uh, the sound. Even though we don't have any Molotovs left, multiple squads of SS Legionary <laughs> going to get the job done. So 2 2 ones now taking more to fire. Afkala, going to be moving this up. I had it originally in this church because it's a nice place to get elevated line of sight over the center of the map, but... Since I'm so far up, having the Alphacolor this far back is kind of pointless. So what I wanted to do is get my Alphacolor into position to spot his reinforcements that are going to be coming through the center of the map. You did see my Volkswagen get wrecked there, unfortunately. And now I'm dealing with the flag that's being capped in the center. So Legionary is going to be sending one to the right-hand side, just try and cut off this road a little bit, stop Artovsky from coming through here. And then we're going to be trying to deal with Frankenstein opposite us as he continues to bring in reinforcements. 
The pack 40 also being brought up. I was hoping that alongside the Avkara, I could also use an AT gun. You can actually set an AT gun up on this ridge. There's like a little bit of a hill here. And if you set the pack 40 right, you can get line of sight. Because Tannenberg is one of those maps that is kind of an outlier in terms of Stow Division 2 map design where it has like normal hills. It doesn't just have like ramped hills, it has like just normal hills which are have different terrain. You can't really see it very well unless you zoom in. But you can actually utilize it to get interesting line of sight from these center areas. Also, if you have units further back, you can fire up onto the side of the hill as well. So that is also something you can make use of. So just trying to get my Volkswagen to finish off the Sapelli PPSH here. And you can see my IG-33 has now engaged the Stralki SVT. And we'll be able to help wipe that out. This is my big HE gun. Watch that fire away. Absolutely smash them to pieces. So Pack 40 did come in, unfortunately taking mortar fire. There is a PO2 that's just floating about, giving him information for his mortars. And I haven't brought in any AA yet. So a little bit of a mistake on my part, not having a, even one piece of AA from the start. But the main reason that I didn't have any AA or didn't bring any extra after the start was because... I was technically being double teamed in the in the middle from the beginning. Now this Opal Blitz did go down. Unfortunately, that did have my pack 40 in it. A little bit of a miss micro on my part, letting that die there. I should have maybe unloaded it early or made sure it came in behind this tree line because it was meant to be on this left side. But for now, I'm happy with my position. You know, we've recovered this flag and I can't really push into all of these T-34-76s with my infantry right now. I need to break them down with my AT, and then I can push forwards. So that is the plan. So it is going to slow down just a little bit for the time being until the fun begins with the Nibelwerfers later in the game. Meanwhile, Jagd and Nykus over here going to be trying to continue their push. We've got Inki fighting Batuhan. Things are relatively even across the board. Right side's having a bit of a hard time. This is such a difficult flag to contest from this side of the map. I do like Tannenberg as a map. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm finally going to be bringing in my AA now that I have the extra cash to do so. That should stop the recon information from the PO2. And I'm going to be able to uh, get my pack 40 basically forwards without it being spotted too easily. And Panzerstrack going to find another T-34 kill here. Having the T-34s engage the pack 40s at this range isn't terrible, but that was an awful miss for me. Like, at that range, the pack 40 should not be missing, but hey. <laughs> My luck is uh, not that great. If this can get off another shot before I fire, then it pins down the pack 40. As you can see, kills it off in this case as well, because the MG got the damage done. So now I've lost that pack 40. Kind of removes any pressure that I have on these T-34s. And I'm still dealing with the Tovsky coming in from this side. This T-34 is going to take a shot at my 221. I'm going to be able to get a transmission damage off with a bounce. <laughs> and, well, my other 221, I don't want to lose that. So we're going to be trying to put it off to the side here. If the T-34 comes round, then I'm going to want to try and get side shots if I can. Unfortunately, Flak 36, I'm trying to pull that back. But it's not really going fast enough. I should have probably retreated at this point, but I was pretty sure that he couldn't see it. Unfortunately, I didn't check the T-34 line of sight as well. It's something I've mentioned before in, in my other videos. But basically, if you check your line of sight and you check their line of sight, it will give you a better perspective as to what the actual line of sight is. Because on uh, on my end, like there's no way he can see me. On his end, you know, there's a chance he could see me, which is why he had line of sight. Okay, Volksdeutsche getting pushed back. Uh, Legionary, they're doing okay, getting a little low on numbers. Unfortunately, when the Legionary 
get low on numbers they're not as effective as they once were which is why keeping them together in like groups of two or three is better because they naturally only come in with eight men which is actually not that many so even like disheartened squads with like 15 men or whatever like a Mustad Madlid or something like that could start to chip your legionary and there's not too much you can do about it Important here that my Fork Stoja tries to kill the Sniper, taking care of the Recon here stops him from spotting my Afkala, which is allowing me to see all of his reinforcements. So that was actually a really important kill, and definitely worth sacrificing some men from that squad. U2-1 meanwhile is just still hanging about. And I've got a Jagdpanzer coming up, yeah, to deal with the T-34s that were pushing on this right-hand side. So I'm in a, a little bit of a predicament, you know, I can't really overextend to capture the mid flag without being flanked in from the right. Thankfully, Tide's going to come over with some units, or this was like the AI, I presume, because Tide dropped <laughs> to help push back the front line here. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty useful. Paddy PPSH, going to be going down. Not a big fan of Sapelli PPSH, I don't think they're really worth a card. It's not that the unit themselves isn't worth 10 points, which it almost isn't. But I would say it's also more about availability in the deck. So using like activation points to bring in a card of Sapelli PPSH when you could be bringing in something else is the main issue there. Unfortunately, second 2 2 one going to be going down. Uh, so my Jagdpanzer here, more important than ever in covering the front. Stern Pioneer is now going to be coming in, going to be trying to get another Pack 40 into the left side. The reason that the Pack 40 on the left would be so much better is because I can actually utilize the range advantage that the Pack 40 has over the T-34s in order to kill them out in the open. The thing is, he can't really push his T-34s forwards either uh, into... You know this road for example to push through and try and contest this flag because I have Panzer Strax, I've got Panzer Faust, you know all sorts of stuff like that so he is also in a predicament at least my main opponent um, Frankenstein whereas Otovsky he's just continuing to put pressure on the flank here but the Jagdpanzer moving up the roads gonna maybe try and get that into line of sight still get my legionary back into position to try and cut off future forces IL-2 coming in for the bombing strike is going to be covered off by the Flak-36, or at least I thought it would be. Thankfully, since I'd pinned it, the bombs go off wildly in the wrong direction. But whilst that was going on, the mortars killing my Pioneer Fjord. I'm just going to take away the veterancy of my units on the left forest side there. Pockerwolf, unfortunately failing to kill the IL-2 as well. Legionary trying to get the better of Stark SVT. Stark SVT are actually pretty difficult to deal with because the 9 SVTs can do damage over time. And you can see there that we, he did manage to get the better of one of my Legionary. Trading like that is not good for me. I didn't really have uh, many Molotovs left. The second squad did, thankfully, so take out that Stark SVT nice and easy. The Molotov is really what makes all the difference. Because the beauty of a Molotov is it makes the enemy unit move. And by making the enemy unit move, they lose their entrenchment bonus and then they take more damage. Uh, the entrenchment bonus is kind of like a hidden thing in Stir Division. Um, there is no indication of being entrenched on the UI. It's just something you kind of learn as you go along. Nice kill though by the one remaining SS Legionary takes the Zapelli Comrati with him, which is actually a really nice kill for us. Removing their veterancy is great, especially considering I don't have any veterancy of my own right now. But lots of infantry coming in, close range infantry. These are Sapudi. So they will have the TNT. He's also got them backed up by Strafniki. So I'm actually in a pretty bad spot. That's a lot of infantry coming in. I don't have an easy way to deal with that just yet because I haven't got my Nebelwerfers on the field. So I'm going to opt to bring in the JU87. Maybe try and get a bit of a bombing strike in here. I was kind of counting on the fact that our opponent was using 37mm AA and in a dive the JU87 is really hard to hit so I was hoping to get it into a dive before the AA starts firing but the AA on the right here 
uh, from Atovsky again, yeah. just enough to stop it in time. I saw earlier my Jagdpanzer cleaned out one of the T-34s, so we are able to push forwards with our infantry now, get a couple of Panzergrens with these MG-34s into the tree lines. Meanwhile, I'm just pulling back with most of my infantry here. Against Zapati, they are decent at medium range, but against double MG-42, I can still have the range advantage. So my best bet right now is to kind of have them on my side of the roads here so you'll see me move them back so that the enemy has to run across the open if they want to get their TNT on target which is really deadly against like dual MG squads but the pack 40 finally finding its way into position on this left side and with the help of the Alphacala we are going to be able to spot and kill some of these T-34s I'm going to crew kill one I could have kept firing at it to kill it off but we're going to shoot the other one because it's going to start firing back at me, and that's more of an immediate threat. <laughs> I don't know how the second shot misses there, but <laughs> it is what it is. And then the third shot gets the kill, and then I'm just free to kill off the one that's crew killed. All right, yeah, here come the Sapati. And you can see here, we're going to win the ranged engagements against the Sapati. If the Sapati had more veterancy here, they'd definitely be in a better spot, but I do have Pioneer Fiona making my Panzergrenz 2 vet. So we managed to kill off two of the close range infantry at range, which is perfect. And now I've got a ton of Sturm Pioneers coming in, which are all going to be three vet because I have them one vet in my deck, and we've got a Pioneer Fiolo that's connected to the commander nearby. So we're just going to be able to melt these Sepedi, and I'm also going to be able to put easy pressure onto the Strathniki on the left hand side here. So you can see I'm just bringing all of the Sturm Pios down. And whilst my Panzergrenz do go down to the overwhelming numbers, the flamethrower is going to make it easy for me to clean this up. There's no leader here, so i just got to pin them down and make them surrender. And that's exactly what I do. So Pack 40 is still trying its best to kill more T-34s. I do manage to take another one with me. But there is the pressure of the infantry from now Dark Phoenix on my left flank so I've dealt with my right flank now I've got to deal with my left flank and I've got rockets coming in from all the way over here for some reason so things not <laughs> easy for me in this game so far but my infantry play has definitely made it a lot better a little bit of a, of a mistake on my part not having the pioneer if you're with the Sturm pioneers here but they are currently just on an attack move to clean out the rest of this forest once again now all the pressure that's on me is actually not necessarily a terrible thing because on the left hand side Lycus and Yacht have managed to push forwards on the right hand side um, the AI is actually making a decent uh, amount of ground here along with other players so this is one thing that I will say if you are a new player and you find yourself being like double teamed and stuff all you got to do is defend like that's your job at that point. If you are like 2v1 in a like a 4v4 even or like a, a, any team game, all your job is to do is just defend. Like don't try and overextend trying to find kills and like win the game for your team. That's not your job at that point. If you're being double teamed or like triple teamed or whatever, like in this case, I'm being encroached from multiple sides. I've got Atovsky coming in on the right. I've got Frankenstein coming in f head on. I've got Dark Phoenix coming in on my left. Like, this is a really bad situation for me to be in. Thankfully, AI has sent some uh, troops here. We also got Dungeon Master trying to hold the far right flank uh, for us. But at the end of the day, this is a not ideal situation. So the best situation here, or the best thing for me to do, is just hold. If I can hold, then I'm taking so much pressure off our teammates. Because this is a lot of resources being invested into dealing with one player. And that's what you want to be. You want to be the person who can just like absorb as much as you can at this point. So I do have a number of coming in. I've also got a pack 43 big old AT gun. And that will be helpful for dealing with all of these tanks coming in on the left side. But the team has heard the call. Inky actually coming in with HS129. There's not much AA here. So he is going to be able to get a good runoff. Unfortunately, no kill, but he will force those back for the time being. My Sturm Pioneers 
going to be holding on the back side of this tree line so that the infantry that he was pushing up with does get taken care of. Now, Avtos are just very subpar against specialized close range infantry like Sturmpires. Like anything with a TNT, Molotov, or Flamethrower is going to be an Avto. But Avtos beat everything that doesn't have one of those three things. So, in this case, managing to get the Sturm Pioneers and to kill the Avtos. And I noticed Dark Phoenix trying to flank me with his M2A1s. Like, he, what he was trying to do is get the 50 cal on target of the Sturm Pioneers to help pin them down. But I didn't let him do that. Going to be losing another uh, of our teammates now. Taki now dropping. So that's on the right side. We've got Tide and Taki, who are both unfortunately dropped. Uh, as now AI, <laughs> trying to hold that right side. We're on a little bit of a time timer, I would say. Uh, nice kill. Was that Jagdpanzer? Managed to get the kill there. My Jagdpanzer, unfortunately losing to the T-34-85-1944. I've got a pack 43 here with two vet that's uh, currently creeping forwards to get more kills. My Sturmpios still running left and right to find more kills in the tree line here as Frankenstein continues to flood more infantry into the close range. But no flags have been lost. That's the most important part. We haven't lost this flag. We haven't lost this flag. And we haven't lost this flag. Yagsaw's bringing up these Yagpanzers on our left flank. Very, very helpful to get rid of the T-34-1944. And this is the other thing. You know, if you are holding long enough, your teammates should eventually be able to come help you out. Unless they're under a lot of pressure themselves. In which case, <laughs> just keep holding <laughs> until they're not. Um, pack 43. Nice choice here. Going to be able to continue to wheel that forwards. Will definitely make Dark Phoenix double take in coming through on that left side because pack 43 will demolish them very easily indeed but it's time to get the Nebelwerfer on target Nebelwerfer currently targeting the IS-2 1944 it's not an easy target for me to deal with otherwise like I do have the pack 43s of course but getting a pack 43 into position here is actually really difficult because that IS-2 is actually out of line of sight at the moment from any AT gun that would be in the middle. He would have to be really close. And the closer we are with an AT gun, the easier it is for a tank to pin it down. So here comes the rockets from the first double Verf strike. And if I can take out the OB, that would be great. So I was hoping that I would be able to, and I did. And the last rocket there almost direct hits the ISC 1944, which is good. Now, I wasn't necessarily counting on that Nebelwerfer killing the IS-2 1944 in one strike. It is possible if three rockets land on target, but the key is to just weaken them, take away some of their health. And IS-2s, they have 12 health. So an IS, uh, like a Nebelwerfer direct hitting it is gonna do a, a decent amount of damage. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happened to the turret there. <laughs> but look at this. Dark Phoenix now investing in a ton of Kajushas. Now over here, my Sturmpire is continuing to try and push through. Unfortunately, one of the Sephardi did get off the HE. But here go the Kajushas. Not really going to hit too much. My Panzergren at the back side of the tree line then. Not really affected much by that strike. The Sturm Pio did get caught, unfortunately. But the Spelly was taken care of. Pioneer Fiala, I'm trying to run it so it's not in line of sight of these infantry units, and then I can focus on using the Sturm Pioneers to push back all of this infantry. But <laughs> the catch is just really hitting hard. Do take out one of my leaders, they take out my Flak 37. Uh, my legionary do get caught a little bit, but not too much. But the key is here to just keep napalming these infantry till they surrender. And I reckon if he'd actually tried to hold his ground, it would have probably been more effective. Now, nice counter battery here from 
whoever it was, <laughs> to kill a couple of the Katushas. Like, since I have my Alf Cutter here, I've been spotting all of this the whole time. And he, he hasn't know, known it was there until he just spotted it accidentally. So, yeah, that artillery able to pre-aim before the Katusha fires. And that's, like, a great kill. So, yeah, my Sturmpires definitely paying themselves off with that, like, quad surrender there. Really, really nice. The Legionary holding their ground as well. You can just see how strong, like, the close-range infantry can be with the 17th SS. And, like, it's not necessarily that Sturm Pioneers are, like, amazing units. It's just in this case, I've got them at really high veterancy and in numbers. But the SS Legionary, they are a superb unit. Not only due to their close-range infantry uh, capabilities, but their ability to also kill tanks, which makes it difficult for, for example, Dark Phoenix here to push forwards and be too aggressive, because he knows I've got a bunch of, like, AT to use. Anyway, double Nebelwerfer. One Nebelwerfer is firing at the ISU-152 and the two T-34-76s, and then one's going to be firing at his mortars to finally try and take them out. So I'm hoping to kill this ISU-152. We're going to get a little bit of a miss on the other few rockets, but that was a juicy rocket there, which ends up doing enough damage to blow up both the T-34-76s. And we actually tried to reverse in this direction, which caused them to show rear armor, so they actually took more damage because of that. And I'm also going to be sending more rockets over here to hit the 120 mil. Uh, that was coming in. So I think these are 81 mil. These were 120 mil. And you can see my opponent <laughs> surrenders. <laughs> the number of is doing the job. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So we've got three of these number of 42s on the field now. These are the big chonky boys. And they seriously pack a punch. And uh, apparently packing a big enough punch to make my Opponent drop. Slafniki. Gonna be taken out. Gonna be dealing with the next one. Like these are big squads generally. And the fact we can just mow them down with a legionary just shows you how strong they are. The team currently sitting on the 1311. And we have this flag over here. That's the only advantage we have on the map right now. Like the map in general might look like we have a lot of ground over here. But there's only one flag being captured. That's the crazy thing about Tannenberg 10v10s. Like it just is such a like the the flags are so deep that it makes the map way more contested. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It's just a different style of map, and I actually quite enjoy it sometimes. I do have an SDK Z71 looking to shoot down the Yak 9T. Do you manage to get it? We also have Dungeon Master on our right flank, who's kind of taken the brunt of the attack from Atovsky, which has allowed me to focus more on bringing in like this artillery to deal with the heavier armor and stuff. So, yeah, Dungeon Master doing a great job holding my right flank now. And uh, obviously, the help from Yag here. And I covered off the attempts from Dark Phoenix and my pack 43 still in a good position here to deal with that. So using a little bit of smoke to get my Sturm Pyos close. I'm just trying to pin down the Sraki enough that we can surrender them. And like a one man Sturm Pyo taking out a more or less full squad of Sraki there is really really good for us. Uh, on this left side, I'm not sure where I took out those two T-34s, but we took out two T-34s, which is good. <laughs> and uh, well, it might have been a Nebelwerfer strike. Nope. <laughs> here go my Nebelwerfers. So my plan here is to hit the 37mm AA. Like we saw Inky come in earlier with a bunch of like H29s and stuff. If we can get rid of the AA support on the T3485s, then he's free to pretty much uh, uh, kill those himself. So just like enabling my team to help me out. Another good tip actually, if you are kind of struggling, the easiest and fastest way for your teammates to help you is by using aircraft. 
But if you can deal with the enemy AA, then your teammates can come in, like Inky is right now with H129, and kill the T-34. In this case, the pin allowed Yag the Jagdpanzers of Jagsource to move forwards and kill that nice and easy. So, no problem there. I also, I think, hit the Katyusha's back here with that Nebelwerfer, as we spotted them earlier. And the Panzergrens now going to be engaging the infantry here. My legionary cutting down the guards and the Razvedozo. Volksdeutsche managed to get the Panzerfaust on target of the Maxim 4M. These Maxim 4Ms, though, do pin the infantry very quickly, as you can see. It doesn't help that this Volkssoldier is disheartened, so it does take more suppression. Yeah, the Maxim 4M there. Actually pretty scary for my Volkssoldier to deal with, but not scary enough for the Pack 43 which absolutely <laughs> demolishes it down this road. Yeah, I'd purposely put my Pack 43 in this position so it could kind of cover this road if there was any attempt to push down here. It's not ideal because, again, if there was like two or three T-34-76s, it could probably overrun the Pack 43 But individual units like that, you can pop. So it just kind of creates that threat that stops your opponent from wanting to push up. Also, at this point, we've got to remember that the Frankenstein is AI. So like the AI doesn't really think like a player. So it might just like feed units down the center of the map. But I'm going to be bringing in uh, a couple of Alcrana now in 222s. So at the start, we brought them in the 221s. I think the 221s, you know, they can be fun to use, but they're not the best units in the world. 222s are just way more versatile because they can kill light units and they can also kill uh, infantry very quickly. So there's a good example of the Panzerstreck finding a kill onto the T 34 because I believe it was one of Frankenstein's tanks. So, Pioneer Führer, unfortunately going to get caught out. I had that on a follow command with the Sturm Pioneer. Uh, so, gets found and killed off. Another T-34-85 going to be dying here. Otovsky actually pushing forwards his T-34-76. I wasn't able to get my Panzerstreck out of line of sight in time. It was reloading. So, I wasn't able to stop it and fire either. Yeah, here's a good example. If the Pack 43 can just like get a one on one, then it will win. But if there's like two tanks or three tanks come around at the same time, then you, you have a problem. Now, I've got my SS Legionary still coming up. You get a lot of availability of these. I think I have a card in like B and C, or I have a card in like A and then a card in C or something like that. So you actually get quite a lot of these potentially. In this case, just gonna be unloading. Next to the T-34-76, gets the Panzerfaust on target, kills the T-34. No problem. There's Legionary really carrying me through this one. So the three Nebelwerfers ready to go once again, just waiting for a decent target. And what I was doing, and you may have noticed me doing, is after every strike, I'm doing like T-fire position. And then I'm right, like doing shift right click on the multi, and what it will do is like as soon as the um, Nibblewerfer stops firing, it will automatically reload itself into the truck that's nearby. And then you're going to have to manually go and move it afterwards. But getting it into the truck is a good start, and then making sure you move after every rocket strike is super important. Really, really big tip for new players. I did also get a uh, IS-2 kill somewhere in here. So that IS-2-1944 dealt with. And here we see the 222s coming into play as they ruin the guards. It's like, oh, you have a half-track? Well, I've got a 222, so I can go deal with that as well. That's Vedoso now coming in. Legionary easy to take care of them. Unfortunately, 222s, they can't really kill ISU 152s. 
<laughs> so having to pull away from that bombing strike that's coming in unfortunately a bit much a8 to 37 mils here gives another great target though for the Nebelwerfers got one Nebelwerfer firing on the right hand side here to clear out any potential infantry I've got one that's going to be firing onto the A8 and I've got one firing onto the ISU 152 first rocket bam both the AA down now hoping for a kill onto the ISU 152 bam direct hit gets the kill all of the infantry that was pushing forwards with that ISU 152 is also now pinned there's some huge strikes here from the Nebelwerfers really really doing tons of damage in the center my SS legionary now I'm able to move forwards use the G43s to engage the 37 mil and my 222 able to clean up the guards in the open very very nice indeed and now I'm finally seeing a chance <laughs> to grab this flag now that Yag's actually pushed up on my left flank and we have Dungeon Master still holding my right flank you know there's a good chance for me to concentrate forces through the center and capture this flag so the Stuk 4 is going to be coming in the Legionary trying to do their best to clean up a lot of this infantry like the AI might have been an AI but it's still putting infantry into these tree lines this too unfortunately going to be cutting the life of that SPW222 short and stopping me from finishing off those guards easy enough But able to get the Molotov off. Doesn't really do too much though. My folk soldier are going to be joining me here. Again, make, you can see me moving the Maltiers after all of the strikes. So, loading up the 300 mil Nebelwerfer. Pulling them over to the side. More SS Legionary coming in alongside those Stokes that I brought in. Looks like you're going to have to deal with the Resvet that has snuck past us. So just trying my best here with these SS Legionary. But there you go, the Resvet Doso. Absolutely mown down. T-34 is pushing me. If I can take out that T-34-85 then my Stug should be able to come through here uncontested and we'll be able to make a play across the open but yeah, again good job by my team on the left here Inky, Jagd, Lycus pushing through taking these flags I believe this uh, like Batuhan and whoever else it was opposite these two kind of on their own over there so good that they took and exploited that position Now again, Nebelwerfer's aiming away. But we're going to be aiming where the AT guns were. We're going to be aiming where this infantry coming in from Hotovsky still. And I'm aiming where, roughly where the T-34 came up to. Try and take that out. I just need a rocket to land right in the middle. And it does, so that's great. Don't have to worry about the Zis-2 anymore. We've got the T-34 here. That's hopefully going to be hit by one of these rockets. And then I've got the number of uh, It's looking for the strike onto these Strauki. And we're going to pin them down. Get them surrendered. Nice and easy. Jobs are good. Un. Now I'm just going to move through some of my legionary to the right. We've got some going to be pushing forwards. And the Stugs will be following through, which is good timing. I've also got a Pack 43 rolling up. And you can see I'm starting to attack move this Pack 43 all the way forwards. Now Atovsky going to be giving up the game on my right flank. Realises he can't break through anymore. There's only 6 minutes and 55 seconds left on the clock. Right side, surprisingly holding quite well, especially considering this was mostly AI at this point. 
I did get backed up by players a little bit by the looks of things, so that will definitely help them hold. The nice thing about AI instead of vision is like, well, it, it's generally bad, but it can be good in a sense that the AI is, is ruthlessly aggressive. And so if you support that aggression with your own units as a player, like it can actually work really, really well. So now some rockets going to be returning the favor. <laughs> Another Katyusha strike coming in. My legionary here. Attack moving towards the T-34-76, but the SDKFZ-71 plus the HE from the Pioneers actually getting the kill there. With a lot of the AA dead in the middle, here comes the bombing strikes of Inki. The Viros. Going to be intercepted by the Yak-9s. He is going to lose one of them, but the rest should be okay. We do have the AA in position and the bombing strikes are going to be coming down there nice and easy onto that infantry. These don't really have like the best payloads in the world, so not a big deal. But uh, now going to be engaging the T-34-85, taking that out. With the extra veterancy, our rate of fire here is really nice, so the Stugs should be doing a decent job. I don't want to come around the corner here with the 222 into the face of the T-3485. So just unloading them first and then they're going to be lining up the Stukes, taking the corner, trying to engage the T-34. There we go, one penetration. He does get an APCR <laughs> on the AI, gets an APCR armor crack. <laughs> unfortunately and the second APCR shell is going to hit the one that was damaged so that's going to die as well not the best engagement for me in the world and we're going to miss <laughs> twice <laughs> but hey we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually after one bounce and then finally the kill now the two T2s are pretty much free to run down all of this infantry so that is exactly what I'm going to do we're just going to attack move across here and wipe out any infantry in my way and finally try and capture my flag this opposite and there we go 16 to 8 brings it down to 1 minute and 40 seconds left we were already at 59 due to Yagd also securing this flag with Dungeon Master so yeah great job all round by my team and I think we did a good job of like holding off the pressure that we came under earlier on. And we got some really, really fun strikes in with the Noble Werfers. And we're going to be able to do that one last time with the Noble Werfer coming in for the Aziz 2 here. Should have really waited uh, for the to, for the Noble Werfer to land, but that's fine. I've got a Noble Werfer strike coming in here, which is supposed to support Yag's infantry. Unfortunately, some of the rockets landed a little bit too close, so it gets pinned down. And I had one that was going for the Katyushas back here. One of them already got strafed by enemy uh, air, oh, sorry, friendly aircraft. Yeah, the 222 is making so much ground. You can see that the salient here is almost capturing even another flag. And enemy team's just completely broken. And of course, Zabtovsky's, uh was an AI at this point. Frankenstein was an AI at this point. Uh, Dark Phoenix was probably one of the only players here uh, that was uh, still in the game. This guy had surrendered. Uh, I'm not sure if this fella surrendered, but he'd been utterly beaten back here and he can't even spawn on this road anymore. So, yeah. IG is coming in just to secure the open against any future infantry. That's 10 seconds left on the clock. And, yeah, I just thought this was a really, really fun game. Showed off the real strengths of the 17th SS, the legionary close range infantry combat that you can pull off with this division. And then also the Nebelwerthers, which are just spectacular and incredibly good. And in the end, 5,260 kills to 1,835 losses, a massive win um, with that KD. Like that is, you know, 1,400 points more than the next person in the game, which is a pretty massive 
Uh, the legionary were just trading so well and because we were playing against like multiple players like we get so many more kills if we play it properly so legionary is getting killed folk is just getting killed like this folk soldier killing two sapati comrati is actually awesome uh, like taking away the leadership bit of a mistake on frankenstein's part making sure he keep kept his sapati comrati behind his infantry would have been a smart play there um, Yag Panzer came in and helped hold back the middle. We got the pack 40 that managed to find three T-34-76 kills um, on the far side. So that was good. Took away a lot of the pressure that he had with those T-34s that could have potentially pushed through. But you can see now the Nebelwerfers and how much damage they did. So that's two different strikes, I assume, of uh, 82 mil mortars going down. Uh, then we had the kills onto the AA that we saw. We had the Nebelwerfer that double killed the T-34s as well as killed a bunch of infantry uh, on top of the hill in the middle, or like in the forested area. And then we had the Nebelwerfer that killed the 120 mils and the Katyushas and also killed the ISU. So yeah, some fast, fantastic strikes. Then when the AI took over, killed a bunch of the T-34-85s in the middle um, with the Panzerschreck. And then it just becomes like an AI feed, basically, <laughs> after that. So, yeah, but before, just so much damage done by these Nebel Werfers. It was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And that's it for now. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.